G'day lawn lovers, welcome to Lawn Porn. Let's get freaky. You're this machine I've got in the back here is called a coring aerator. That beeping you hear is because I couldn't get it in the back of my SUV. I have to drive with the back door open and I'm not gonna lie, I'm having visions of this thing flying out the back of my car on the freeway and causing an accident. This thing's tied down with a piece of rope they gave me to the handrail back there by my kid's seat. If that thing snaps... Whew. First part of the job done, I got the aerator home. Before I get going on my aeration, I'm gonna scalp the lawn at a low height with my rotary mower. Honda engine. First time, every time. Now we're not trying to impress our neighbors with this cut. The truth is you're gonna make it look worse by exposing the roots of the Bermuda. And you're probably gonna to need to sharpen the blades when it's all said and done. But that's a video for another day. All right, so we're done with the scalping. This is as low as my mower would tolerate. The reason I cut it so low is this is a leveling project. We have all of these holes from where I dug out the crabgrass and the air raid is gonna create even more holes. So tomorrow when I have the sand delivered, I'm gonna push the sand into all the holes to create a nice level surface. Let's talk penetration. Now there ain't no aeration without penetration. See these tines here? As you can see from my first pass, when I push this machine over the top of the lawn, those tines dig down into the soil and pull out these cores. Looks like a piece of shit. These coring machines might look intimidating, but they're simple to use and cost less than 100 bucks to rent for the day. Compared to buying one for a few grand and having the hassle of storing it year round, it's a no brainer to rent. After your first pass, take the time to remove the cores you've pulled from the soil. You don't want to be driving over them or smooshing them into your lawn with your foot on your second pass. It'll also prevent these turf turds from getting pushed back into the hole from whence they came. All right, that's enough mess for one day. This is USGA certified sand. Good enough for country clubs, good enough for me. Now before spreading the sand, don't miss this opportunity to feed the little mouths you've opened up in your lawn. First is humor char. Simply put, it helps your soil hold on to everything that is good. Second is a slow release fertilizer that will feed the lawn all season long. It contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium at a ratio of 21, 7, 14. Finally, I'm gonna turbocharge my lawn with a fertilizer called Green Shocker. It has a quick release formula that's going to help my lawn recover in the short term. As you can see here, as the aerator's gone in, it's lifted up this little lip in the soil. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run over it one more time with my mower, just so this roller can push down those lips. Cause when I use the leveling rake later, I don't want it to be catching on it. Now we're ready to start spreading the sand. Don't be timid here. It looks like a lot, but your lawn is gonna grow back through this layer of sand with ease. The most important thing you'll need is a lawn leveling rake. This purpose-built tool is gonna to help push the sand into the holes and create a level surface on top. We don't want any peaks or valleys that will lead to unwanted scalping with our mower later. When you're happy with the coverage, finish off with one of life's great joys, a hand job. This will help settle the sand into its new resting place and expose some of the grass blades underneath to give them a head start to grow back through. Looks good. Until next time, lawn lovers.